Yo, what's up, Rockers? So a couple of years ago, I picked up a lot of N64 systems, and they're all in pretty good shape. They were all RGB moddable, which is awesome, but unfortunately, some of them had some damage on it. So I was doing my usual morning routine and flipping through Twitter, and I noticed this. And what this is is a post from my guy Alex, and he was creating what he calls the N64 Junior, which in essence is a 3D printed replaceable case for your N64 console. Needless to say, I got in touch with them right away and asked to get a unit on hand to be able to take a look at. Having multiple N64 consoles with broken shells, this thing completely piqued my interest. And needless to say, Alex brought the goods. So in this video, let's check out this N64 Junior console replacement shell and let's do some RGB modding to this console. So this console might be a little more nasty than I even let on in the intro. In addition to the crack that you saw, there's also like all this nasty gunk inside. I don't even know what that is. Let's just call it dust because I don't even want to imagine what it actually is. But anyway, you can see it extends all the way to the controller ports. Those are absolutely nasty as well. So taking a look at what I got from Alex over at Blue Shell 3D, it's this really lovely spice orange case with awesome gray accents. And you can kind of see he's got various cutouts to add additional ventilation, as well as slim down the overall profile. Here it is seated on top of the original N64 console, and you can clearly see that it's quite a bit smaller. Taking a deeper dive and looking into the shell, you can clearly see he's done some very nice 3D prints. There are a few screws that hold everything together, but for the most part, things are actually press fit in. So, you know, if you're going to do something like this, you need a very high tuned 3D printer. The last thing I'll point out is the type of plastic used, which is a combination of PLA and PETG. Anywhere that's a high temp area gets the PETG, which is more heat resistant, and anywhere where that heat resistance isn't necessary, you get the PLA. All right, so I'm a little bit ahead of you guys here. Took my game bit screwdriver. I pulled off the uh, screws out of here, 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 and here, and one more right here. And this thing's pretty nasty, so I figured I'd let you guys witness it right here with me. I can only imagine, just based on how crappy the, uh, yeah, it's a nice little trick, by the way, you don't need any special tool. Uh, and don't use a screwdriver, you ruin this case. But anyway, I, you know, like I said, with this thing being so crappy, like, I figure, uh, the inside's got to look terrible too, so yeah, let's have a look. And let's see what we got. Oh, uh, there we go. Ah, uh, it's pretty gross, not gonna lie. Bunch of dust bunnies. Uh, the key is this, actually, which is a CPU-03 board, which means it will be uh, able to be RGB modded, and oh man, those, yeah, there's definitely a screw loose in there. Oh, there it is. All right, we got that screw. Yeah, those uh, controller ports are pretty nasty too. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and zip these screws out. We can get the board out, we can clean it up. And uh, yeah, I think from there, it's on to RGB modding it. Okay, and the beauty of this is you just need to like loosen out these perimeter ones. So it's these two here, these two here, these ones uh, right next to the cartridge bay. And then all these guys, and one right here, and these two. And then this thing will actually just lift right out. So you don't need to go through and, you know, remove all these throughout here. Now, this board's pretty nasty, not gonna lie. So here's what I'm gonna do. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Hopefully we don't need to use this again. Uh, I will save it and clean it, because I'm sure I'll be able to use it again in another project. But yeah, I can go ahead and take this, and I'm just gonna get it cleaned up next. And hopefully from there, we can do some RGB modding. All right, just gonna wipe it up with some microfiber cloth and a little bit of IPA. And hopefully that'll get rid of the vast majority of the dust on here and get this thing looking pretty nice. Okay, just gave it a quick wipe down. Next, I'm gonna remove the rest of this uh, heat spreader. And you gotta be very careful when you do this because there are a couple uh, RAM chips right over here. And the goal is, of course, never to disrupt those. So I'm just gonna pull out these last couple of screws over here and then kind of just pop out the heat spreader from the back of the board. Again, for just installing a basic RGB mod like this, you technically don't need to do this, but I definitely wanna clean under here because I know it's nasty. 
Okay, just like that, popped it free. And there we go. Yeah, you gotta be really careful because the uh, RAM chips right here, you can see there's only two solder leads uh, on both, two legs. So those tend to come loose pretty easy. If you break them uh, free of their pads, you can, you can solder them back down, but obviously you don't wanna do that. So next I'm just gonna kinda clean up the board and then I'm gonna pull out this and we're gonna clean under there and yeah, hopefully get this thing looking pretty good. Here's the rest of the heat spreader board. This actually looks pretty good. Uh, at least on the inside it does, and those pads are actually in still pretty good shape, which is incredible because it's like, you know, I don't even know when was this thing made, 1996 probably, 1997, sometime in that frame, so yeah, 25 years ago. Alright, anyway, let's get in here, let's get this thing cleaned up. Oh, yep, that's a nasty cartridge port, disgusting, alright. We're gonna get this thing all cleaned up and uh, yeah, get this thing all wiped down. It should be looking pretty good. So again, just gonna use some 99% uh, IPA and honestly probably a toothbrush and should be in good shape. So let's get this thing cleaned up. All right, I'm gonna clean up these controller ports as long as I'm here. I'm thinking some, you know, IPA toothbrush and probably Mr. Clean's magic eraser should do the trick. But uh, yeah, let's get in there and let's find out. All right, finally the refurb is complete and we can make our way over to RGB and we'll be using the Voltar RGB kit for this N64. Now the beauty of this is of course how simple this kit is to install. Simply slip it over top of the multi-out port and solder three different points and you're pretty much good to go. Now another thing that's kind of worth mentioning is technically speaking any N64 console can be RGB modded, it's just which RGB mod do you need. Now. The CPU01 through CPU04, you can just use these very simple RGB mods. And like I said, this one from Voltar is actually really great. I've been using it for years and I can easily highly recommend it because the results are fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and get this soldered in. Now for me, this is pretty easy. Just go ahead and hit these points over here on the multi-out. I'm just gonna tack everything down and then go over it and make some really nice final joints. All right, with that board all soldered in, next I'm gonna check the C-Sync line to determine whether I need to solder anything. And I'm specifically looking over here at Q1, R15, R16, and C109. And as you can clearly see, those are all populated. Sometimes they're unpopulated, but in my case, they are already populated. So what that means is I've already got a fully buffered C-Sync line. So from a sync perspective, no additional work is needed on my end, and I just need to solder in R, G, and B. So for this, I just used some nice copper stranded wire and I've already pre-tinned the tips of it and I'm gonna go ahead and insert them into the vias here. There are alternative solder points that you can uh, hook up to as well, but this is just the way I've kind of always done it. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these wires to the vias and these aren't my final solder joints. They just represent a tack to hold everything in place so I can come back in and make my final joints. And once they've been tacked, just go ahead and come in there, make my final joints, make everything look really, really, really pretty. And hopefully you can see right here how nice and shiny and nice those joints actually look. And with all those in place, really all we need to do is run the conductors up into the pads over here and solder to the RGB lines. And really this is pretty simple stuff over here. So again, just kind of kind of go in, uh, pre-tin everything, get everything tacked into place and then make my final joints. All of this is pretty basic stuff and really it's just a matter of taking your time, making a nice solid joint and you should be good to go. So I spent a bit of extra time cleaning up the uh, shielding after the quick wipe down and really glad I did because yeah, that thing's absolutely disgusting and I mean I probably went through a dozen like this. I mean it's disgusting. Just absolutely gross. But anyway, let's get this thing re uh, put together. Everything's looking good on the RGB mod. 
Um, even better, you know, it's nice not having to install the sync line, so that's always good. So we'll get this thing put back together, and then it's time for that new case. So Alex didn't exactly give me a ton of instructions. He said just insert it at an angle and... Oh, wow. Okay, well, it's in. <laughs> So putting the screws back in seems simple enough and I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about it other than this could be the one place where I'd be a little bit nervous with something like this simply due to the fact that you're using 3D printed plastic and you're putting obviously metal screws into it. Now what I can tell you is I did manage to screw this thing up putting it back together and I forgot to put together the there's like a little cover over the multi out and of course I forgot to put that on so I actually had to remove all the screws and then put that back on and then re-put all the screws back in and Honestly, the plastic received the screws really well. Probably the only suggestion I would have is if you're doing this yourself, just don't over tighten the screws. But I'll tell you what, getting this thing reassembled and put together, it looks pretty awesome. And I'm really digging the spice orange on this. But I'd be lying if I didn't say it just feels like something's missing. But hold up, hold up, I got an idea. All right, now this thing can be done. I mean, come on, we need a custom jewel on here, right? Alright, with that console work all done, it's time to actually take a look at how it plays. Now, naturally I want to show off Voltar's RGB mod because I actually think that the video quality off of an RGB mod is really spectacular, especially when you run it through a video processor. Now as a basis of comparison, we're just going to go ahead and use composite video over here so you can get, just get an idea of what it looks like. And hopefully what you can kind of see is the video quality is just a little bit muddy and a little bit washed out. Now when we flip it over to RGB, you can clearly see that the image quality is a heck of a lot better in my opinion. More specifically looking at some of the faces in the text bubbles and other 2D elements and text and things of that nature are very sharp and they just look a lot better and less muddy than the composite video picture overall. Now one thing to note is this is flowing through a FrameMeister. So basically I'm going through some Insurrection Industries SCART cables into the FrameMeister and then it's capturing via HDMI through my Elgato capture card. Composite, on the other hand, was just a direct input into the Elgato capture card, so there is a small difference there. Next, I kind of wanted to do a more direct comparison, so I just captured some video from the intro sequence of Star Fox. And as I kind of peel back here, you can very clearly see some of the differences between both RGB and Composite. And again, the best place to look is at that text box, and you can clearly see the text getting more clear as I pull back the Composite and you can see the RGB. The other thing I just kind of want to point out is there's a little bit of a too much gamma sitting here on the frame meister on the RGB capture, but honestly it still looks really great. Overall, this was a great project, and I think Alex over at Blue Shell 3D did a fantastic job in these cases. I'm really, really, really looking forward to the formal release, which will hopefully happen later on this month. For more information on it, probably the best place to follow him is on Twitter, and he'll post kind of a pre-release whenever he's ready to do so. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But anyway guys, I want to thank you so much for watching, and we'll have another one here soon.